And now I'd like to introduce to you or uh, welcome uh, Bishop Senyojo and to share with us about the St. Paul's uh, Reconciliation Ministry, the, the Center for Reconciliation and Equality, and the work that is happening in Uganda. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, as a pastor moderator. I'm indeed privileged to stand before you to share something I know. I'm not just being told about it, but I've experienced. I've been a bishop for 38 years. 24 of these years, I was a diocese of the diocese of West Uganda in the Anglican Church, which we call Episcopal. Uh, since 1998, I started the council because uh, after my retirement, that is when I retired, mm. I knew there were so many issues which needed to be dealt with, people which they needed to share. In 2001, a group of young people, men, men, actually they were men, young men, came to me and said, we heard about you. I don't know how they heard about me. <laughs> but we feel we can share with you some of our deep concerns. We are members of your church, most of us, they were of our Anglican church but they had been rejected because they expressed themselves to be different. <coughs> they were gay. And their, whole, their uh, families also were not happy with them for speaking out they were gay. So they said to me, what can we do? Because they tell us that even God mm does not love us. Oh. Tell you. Oh, I said to them, I know, I know <coughs> your story. <coughs> Fortunately, I have a background of uh, uh, studies in human sexuality and marriage. I did my doctoral program in this area. So I could understand. I said, God, I know, loves you. Do you mm. believe that is how you are really created? That's what you are? They said, yeah, that's what we are. Mm -hmm. But they are telling us to change. Mm. We cannot. I said to them, God loves you as you are. This was a real relief to them. Mm -hmm. Well, my church heard about what I was doing. Mm. They were very happy about it. They said what they wanted me to do was to condemn these people. Mm and have them changed. I said, no, I don't believe that is what I should do. Well, they said, if you can't do that, you are not, no, no longer going to serve with us. You said, the retired bishop, you continue to work when you are invited. And when I come here, I work. But my church inhibited me from working with them. I said, I, I choose not to work with you, but to obey what I believe God has called me to do. So I continued to counsel these people, and then that is in 2001, when I was really so disgusted also with my church, I stayed for six months in this country being threatened that maybe even my life was in danger. My wife was at home. Mm. She told me it would be not better for me to go home. So for six months, I remained in Maryland with the two of my friends. John, I mean Michael, Michael Hopkins and John um, uh, Clinton Bradley. They housed me 
I stayed with them. They are two gay people. I was happy to be with them. Myself, I'm not gay, I'm straight. But I, I think this time was important to really know that being gay, you're a human being, <laughs> like a straight person. So it's, I lived with them. And they are great friends of mine to this day. Well, in 2001, we were threatened after the preaching of some evangelicals from this country. They preached news which created a of fear. Homophobia went so high, especially against gay people. And a bill was, an act, was proposed, what they call a private bill. My friend, a friend, I call him a friend, because I love everybody. <laughs> a friend, David Bahati, introduced to this bill. And this bill has been on the books. It is a draconian bill. A draconian bill. So we have tried to say this bill shouldn't be passed. But it's still there. It is it's written. Now, I founded uh, this center called St. Paul's Reconciliation and Equality Center. It so happened, by coincidence, <laughs> my friend there, uh, Albert, had this thing in his mind also about St. Paul, St. Paul. St. Paul is our mentor, my mentor. Not the Paul who says, Women should not preach in the churches. <laughs> 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 but as people have been studying Paul, they believe that there is not only one Paul. <laughs> so, so I'm a follower of the radical Paul, <laughs> who says, in Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, no male or female, no slave or free. We are all one. Yes. Christ Jesus. And I usually say, if Paul lived at this time, when we are so <laughs> obsessed <laughs> with the, uh, the LGBT issues, he would have added neither LGBT nor heterosexual. Mm -hmm. We are all. Mm -hmm. Whether you are heterosexual or in the group of LGBTQ, <laughs> 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 we, are, we are all one. We are all one. So I think this is the news, and we started the three programs at St. Paul's Reconciliation and Equality Center. One of the pro programs is HIV and AIDS. We are, we are a gay straight alliance organization. Mm, yeah. This is very important. Because we are working together with all people, gay and straight, in fact, we have a program now uh, in HIV AIDS, supported by Elton John. It is led by Robert Mbega, maybe one time might speak, I don't know. He's not here? He's here. He is. Robert, are you around? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so that man is <laughs> being in touch with all people. We are, we are trying to gear this program mostly to MSA, but we are accepting also other people to come, and they are coming, and we are touching lives of LGBT as well as heterosexuals who want to come to us, and this is wonderful, and we've been able to meet people, talk to them. Robert has met doctors, people in high offices, and share with them concerning LGBT issues through HIV AIDS. That's why I say you cannot separate, mm -hmm. you cannot separate HIV AIDS from LGBT. Because if you do, it means you are going to, 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 to uh, have the LGBT people as excluded group given over to genocide. Mm -hmm. 
Give, give it over to Sarah, the genocide. Uh, and I don't think you would like to do that. So I've been hearing this morning people talking about how we have real health, which is good. The HIV AIDS people. Very little has been talked about LGBT. That these people should go together with HIV AIDS if HIV AIDS programs are to be successful. So <coughs> I am glad that I could share this with you. And these three programs I mentioned HIV AIDS. We have another program which is economic empowerment because we want people to improve their lives. Some of the people have no jobs. Uh, and we have young people working in this economic pro, uh, the, uh, empowerment program. And then we have advocacy. I've found people are prejudiced against LGBT people because they are misinformed. We need to have sensitization of people dialogue with the people, share with the people what it is to be LGBT, and talk about also, of course, human rights. LGBT, I'm glad uh, the Secretary of State, uh, Hillary Clinton said, uh, LGBT uh, is also human right. People didn't like that, but it is. LGBT is a human right. I'm about to stop because my time is already, I think, almost over. Um, I'd like to conclude by a, oh, well, I've got one program, CAPO, which is very important. A number of young people have been running away from their churches because they hear bad news. Mm -hmm. Bad news, being abused, being told God doesn't love you, it is a waste of even your time coming here unless you are changed. And they have been running away from church. We have a chapel which says, God loves you. This is the good news. He loves all of us. Mm -hmm. And these young people, we mix. Even those who are not LGBT come to our chapel. And we share, read some of the books, and discuss. So this is a chapel which is there. With these programs, I would just to say, I'd like to say that we need still your solidarity and support. We need this. And uh, in conclusion, I would like to appeal to the parliament of Uganda, who are now still wondering whether to pass this bill, which we call Bahati Bill anti-homosexuality bill, draconian bill, kill gay bill, they should reconsider this. Have compassion and not pass it. Not pass it. Because even if it passed, it won't work. It will not work. Because why? Why? We have the support of people all over the world, yeah. many, many people yeah. against it, except a few, <coughs> still 76 countries are still uh, criminalizing <coughs> LGBT. But there are many which are, we want to come on board and decriminalize, decriminalize LGBT. We are grateful to the, uh, to the president of this country mm. who has not minced his words mm. and opposed people's support. Legalization of, of uh, 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 yeah, legalization of LGBT laws. Instead of creating laws to protect the marginalized people, laws are being enacted to oppress the marginalized. Instead of enacting laws, legalizing love for all. <laughs> Legalize love for all. We are thinking of laws 
to penalize people for being what they are, for being created in that way. And that's one person said, why did God create me like that? Even when a young man was asking me this, I said, no, people are misunderstanding whatever they are saying. Love is above everything. If people loved as God loves, they couldn't say that God didn't create you. They are not God. God created you like that. So I'm grateful to the president here. I'm grateful to the uh, Secretary of State Hillary mm -hmm. Clinton. Yes. I'm grateful to all of you. All of you. And lastly, I'm grateful to our president. Some people may wonder. I'm grateful to the president of Uganda, Museveni. Because if it was not for him, this draconian bill would have already been passed. Mm. Yeah. So I ask God to give him power yes. to withstand this tight pressure and speak out and say, even if you pass it, for me, I will not sign it to be a bill. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. You've shared with us about your journey and your ministry with people who have been marginalized. Uh, you've uh, challenged us with the message of love, uh, a love that uh, sees beyond everything to uh, what is really essential as human beings, as children of God. Uh, and you've uh, uh, asked us to be in solidarity uh, with you and the people of Uganda uh, uh, a grateful appreciation for leadership that uh, uh, keeps things like the Bahati bill from being passed and harming the lives of, of people. So thank you for your message.